In this video, I will show you how to embroider the Immaculate Heart of Mary. All of the materials needed for this embroidery are included in my embroidery kit, as well as instructions on how to complete the embroidery. But this video will provide you with some additional techniques and more of a visual on how I go about doing the stitches and the embroidery. If you would like to purchase a kit, I will include a link to my little store where you can do that, or if you've got the materials already, then feel free to follow along to see how I do this embroidery. The first step is to get your embroidery fabric onto the hoop. Now if you've done any sort of embroidery before, you probably know how to do this. However, if you're a beginner or if you are using my kits, there's a couple of things to keep in mind. So of course the hoop, the small part of the hoop always goes on the back and then the larger part goes over top of it. Now you need to make sure that the fabric is straight and well stretched out over your hoop. So once you've got it straightened out, you can put the large part of the hoop on top and continue to stretch out the fabric and get it well aligned there before tightening it. Now if you're doing this on the pouch, you need to make sure that the fabric, that the hoop, sorry, is only over one layer of the fabric so that you don't stitch through both parts of the pouch because then you'll stitch your pouch together and that is not good. So as you can see here, I am stretching out the fabric once I've tightened it a little bit. Make sure that it does not get distorted and I'm just checking the tension to make sure that it is how I like it. The tighter the better, but making sure that the image is not distorted because then your embroidery will come out crooked. I'm just going to speed through the rest of getting this nice and straight and tight. And I want to show you the end. So if I turn my hoop over, you'll see that on the back, it's only going through the one layer of fabric on the pouch so that you don't stitch together two sides. And if you just test the needle, you put a needle through, you're going to want the needle only to go through that one layer. And so to help with this, you can curve the pouch around the hoop now the pouches that I've included in the embroidery kit are actually wider than the one I used um, to demonstrate in this video, so you should have no problem getting it all the way around the hoop and out of the way so that you only have your one layer of fabric uh, to work with and the rest of it will not get in your way. So once that is to your liking, you are ready to embroider. The next step is preparing your floss and threading your needle. We'll start with the light pink floss because we are going to do the roses first. Embroidery floss is made up of six strands that if you look closely you can see all wound together. And normally you select the number of strands that you would like to use, which I uh, suggest in the guide for this kit. But for the roses, we are going to use all six strands, so I will show you later in this video how you actually go about dividing the strands. But for now, you're going to thread your needle, which I've included a needle threader in the kit that you can use to help make it easier, especially when you are using more strands of floss. And then we're going to knot the end, so you can do whichever type of knot you'd like, but I'll show you one that I use that comes out very neat looking with very minimal extra floss dangling at the end. So you want to pinch your floss under your needle and wrap it around twice and then hold the floss that you have pinched or that you have wrapped around and slide it down your needle to the end and then hold it tightly and you're going to pull the needle through while holding that little knot that you've wound around and you're going to pull it all the way to the end of your line of floss and that will give you a neat little knot at the end. To embroider the roses, we will use what is called a woven wheel stitch using the light pink colored floss. So we'll start with the one in the middle and you're going to bring your needle up right at the top of one of the lines on that wheel and pull it all the way through. So it's called a woven wheel because first we are going to embroider the lines on the wheel and then weave the floss in and out of those lines in a circle and that will give the, the effect 
of roses. So pull your floss through right to the center of that wheel and then come up again at one of the other tips along the wheel and the uh, pattern that's drawn on the pouches for the kits actually has a circle around as well so it's a little bit easier to visualize the circle of where the rose will end up. So you want to do this through all five of the lines in that wheel, always coming out at the tip and ending in the center of the wheel and try as much as possible to make the lines uh, equal distance. So once that is complete, this is what it should look like. And here's what the back looks like as well. And your floss should be on the back end of your hoop now. And for the next part, we're going to bring the needle up in between two of these lines as close to the center as possible. So pull your needle through and you can take your time finding the best spot where you'd like to come up. As you can see, that's how long it takes me. And pull it all the way through. Now for the next part, you are not going to put your needle back through the fabric. You are going to go around in a circle, weaving it in and out, over and under the lines along the wheel. So pull it under the, the next line around there. Pull it tight, make sure there's no extra floss along the back. And then you're going to skip one line and put it under the following line. So I'm skipping the next one. And turn your hoop so that it'll be comfortable for you. And then pull the needle under. So as you can see, I'm not putting the needle through the fabric. I am just putting it under the floss of that line and pulling it through. So again, I'm going to skip one and put it under the next line. So as you can see, it's making a little little circles starting at the center there and if you do it for a little bit you'll see that it starts to look like a rose. So here it is coming along nicely, but you want to keep going until you can no longer see the lines underneath that you have been weaving in and out of. So I like to go until my rose looks nice and full and until those lines are covered up as best as I can. And once you are satisfied with how your rose looks, take your needle and stick it slightly underneath your rose in front of the, the, the next line that you would normally go under so that the end of it is hidden under the rose. And that completes your very first rose. And as you can see on the back, it looks the same as it did when you first did the little pinwheel because all of the woven floss is on this side of your hoop. To begin your next rose, simply bring your needle up to the top of the next little pinwheel. Since it is right beside your previous rose, you can do this. However, if your next rose were to be far away, you might have to knot it off at the back and start another knot over. So now you're doing the same thing with this one stitching the five lines that will be the weaving points and for this rose i will just speed it up so that um, it goes a little bit faster but i will give you a couple of tips that um, pertain to doing your second rose especially right next to the first one the most important thing to be careful of will be as you're sticking your needle 
weaving it through the second rows you do not want to catch any of the floss on your first rows otherwise you might uh, pull the floss and distort that row so as you're weaving it try to point your needle away from that first rose so that it doesn't point toward it so as you can see here I this needle would go toward that rose but instead I am turning it away so that it points slightly up and is clear to go through now I want to stop this rose when it's about the same size as the first one. However, you might notice that some of the lines underneath still show. So you can take your needle and slightly rearrange your woven stitches to try and cover up that line as best you can. And then just end it the same way that you did the first rows, hiding your needle underneath the rows a little bit and pulling it through to the other side. Now you'll do the next roses the same way that you did these two. Now I'm finishing off this third rose, which is at the end. And since the other two roses are further away, I like to tie this one off at the back and then start my thread over with a new knot for the next rose. So the reason to do this is, first of all, it saves on that little bit of embroidery floss that you would be stringing all along the back uh, to the to the next place that you're going to start um, your new rows uh, but the other reason is that it will uh, there's just a bigger chance that it might snag on the back if you have a lot of a, a long piece of floss on the back there so once this is complete you're going to turn your work over and to tie a knot uh, the one way I like to do it is to slide my needle underneath one of the little stitches on the back side here and then that will give you sort of a loop that you can knot through so the first one I like to slide under just to position it and then slide it under again and when you have a loop there slide your needle into that loop and that will create your knot. So I'm just pulling through here and then pull a knot nice and tight. Now you can double knot it. Um, again, if you'd like, that would keep it more secure, but one knot should also uh, suffice here, especially if you're going to back your work, that will protect it. So once you've knotted it, then you can Cut your floss uh, close to the knot so that you don't have any extra dangling there and you're ready to go again. Now I've got my floss knotted again and I'm ready to do the next rows the same way that I've started the last ones. Here are all five roses completed. And I'm just going to knot the back the same way I did last time and the next thing we'll do after this is the sword and for the sword we're going to use a different number of floss strands so first I will show you how to go about separating your floss if you look closely at the end of your floss you'll notice that it's made up of six separate little strands so when an embroidery calls for a different number of strands to use for a particular stitch or section, you need to separate your floss so that you use the right amount of strands for that section. The sword for this embroidery calls for three strands of floss. So I'm going to separate out three strands of the six in one hand and hold the other three strands in the other hand and then simply Pull them apart very gently. You might have to play around with this to find a way that works for you, but I found that if you let the remaining floss underneath dangle in the air so that it can unwind itself, it goes a lot smoother. Just make sure to pull it gently so that you don't, um, you don't accidentally wind it up into itself again because then you might get stuck. 
So that's sort of what happened to me here because I'm trying to record it and I can't hold it too high up or I will miss the camera. Once you've pulled that apart, you will take one of the lengths of floss and that will be the one that you use. And the other one you can wind up on your little uh, bobbin that came with your kit or if you don't have that, find some way to keep it uh, organized so that it doesn't get tangled while you're working with the other piece. So I'm just winding this around here and I've got uh, a lot of it, but your kits will only include um, as much as you need for this embroidery uh, with a little bit extra just in case. So I've set that aside and then with the piece that you're using, you are ready to thread that through your needle and tie a knot at the end and then we will begin embroidering the sword. Now we will do the sword and for this we are going to use a satin stitch. Now there's uh, various different ways that you can do this. I am going to show you a trick here that I like to use that makes it just a little bit nicer and easier to stitch. So start at the bottom of your blade and put one little horizontal stitch along basically the width of the blade at the bottom and then you're going to do the same at the top. And what this will do is it will give you a good guidance for when you're making your stitches going down the blade and it'll also give a little bit of a raised effect to your blade, which I think looks nicer. Once you've done that, insert your needle at the top and pull your floss through and insert it again at the bottom, directly across from that first stitch so you have a straight long stitch going down the length of the blade of the sword. And this is what a satin stitch is. It's uh, making essentially a bunch of stitches in a row that are meant to fill a space. And we will be using the same stitch for the heart later on, so you will get a lot of practice for this one. Once you have filled the blade of the sword, you're going to move on to the little horizontal part. Now for this, I'm going to do the same thing. Add two little stitches at the ends. And for this one, instead of stitching up and down, I'm going to stitch horizontally. So once you add your two stitches to the edge, you are going to come up again just behind that little stitch. And what I mean when I say behind the stitch is I mean you're going to uh, cover that little stitch. You're going to go over it with your floss. Uh, so make sure that that little uh, guiding stitch that you make in the beginning doesn't show up once you have filled that area. And so uh, then I'm doing the same thing here, filling this area with my horizontal stitches this time. So you can do the stitches horizontally or vertically, but this is the way that I like to do it um, that I think works best. Especially the top part of the handle though, it, that one can really go horizontal or vertical and either one I think will look just fine. Now for the handle here, I have decided not to do those extra stitches at the ends just because of uh, the way that it connects to the rest of the sword. Um, I thought it would be a little bit more complicated. And I decided to make my stitches going horizontally here. So I'm starting at the bottom and then just following the lines that are drawn there just taking little horizontal stitches and I will go up the handle just like this until I reach the top and then tie it off at the back once I'm finished. Now for the very top here, I made a couple of stitches that are just a tiny bit wider and I just thought that added a nice effect to it and it's not too difficult to do so if you'd like to do that you can as well. 
Now I'm finished stitching my sword and all that's left to do here is to just tie it off at the back and cut your floss and then we'll be ready to move on to the heart. Now since this video ended up being rather long, I decided to end it here and I will make a part two showing how to embroider the heart and the flames. So I hope this was helpful. Please let me know if you have any questions about this and I will see you in the next video.